to make a to make a bridge without copings uh, means a lot. It's it's a, it's a tremendous uh, shift in the industry because we have customers who ask us all the time, "How do you make one of these things without copings?" You know, for all the reasons that uh, that Travis said. Uh, uh, but one of the main ones is just hygiene, right? And and delamination. I'll get into it. I'll get into a little bit of that. Not not too much, but I'm going to get into a little bit of the reasons we love it. So I'm going to go through a few more slides before I get to this. But this is the outline of the program, and I'm I'm going to go through these as quickly as possible. It's going to be recorded, and uh, it will be shared on our website. It'll be broken down by uh, whether you're digital, whether you're analog, whether you're doing this through surgery or whether you have an iOS scanner or just want to use stone, we have a method for, uh, for each one of those protocols to send us the simple records to order a Procera bridge. So um, I, what, what I've seen, what we have seen, uh, and in, you know, in, in the many cases over the years and work with our doctors, what are the issues with full arch? Uh, and, and they can all be solved with our, um, our techniques for records, and, uh, and with this Procera bridge, you know, lack of passivity, uh, that's gonna be the number one reason that a, that a zirconia breaks. I mean, sometimes it's material failure, but let's face it, it's usually the, the, the model is not perfect or perhaps the, the manufacturing process uh, or the inserting the coping process is not perfect and the product's not passive. And if it's zirconia, it will break. So it has to be passive. A uh, screw access position. I mean, who has not had a problem with uh, screws? Uh, facially, lingually, uh, any number of reasons. So this built-in screw channel uh, certainly helps with that, uh, with with the positions of um, the positions of the screws. So much better. Hygiene. Uh, I mean, my, my goodness. If um, if you don't have copings, you don't have cement, then you don't have all the issues on the intaglio. Uh, you don't have as many. You have to design the prosthetic, obviously. Um, concave, convex, and uh, it has to be polished and it has to be cleansable. But if you if you turn over a full arch, you know what's underneath it. And it's usually mostly around those areas, the copings. Um, and then, of course, fracture. If we don't have to manually put in uh, the copings on a model with cement space, cement gap, uh, then you're going to have uh, less fracture. It's going to be a more secure prosthetic directed MUAs or directed implants. And tie based to bonding. You know, we've talked about that. You're not going to have that. They don't exist. Uh, Travis went through most of this. Certainly more hygienic. It's more dependable. Uh, this uh, the, the zirconia around the um, you know around the prosthetic adapter, and certainly uh, that's on the direct implant. But most of the cases we work on are are on MUA level. And if you don't have a coping inside, you have more material. Everybody wants a, a Procera, everybody wants a zirconia bridge, Procera bridge to be narrower, buccal lingual, labial lingual, but, uh, but you can't sacrifice it because of strength. Well, if you don't have a coping inside, then you add another millimeter, at least with cement and material space. So it's much stronger. And then today, you know, really not doing any layered ceramics on these. It's all um, uh, surface fired stain with, with Mio, which is beautiful. Uh, but you won't have chipping. So this product is very strong. And, you know, we went through the angle screw channel part, but, you know, because we're so involved with guided surgery and these full arch cases, uh, you know, the answer always is, uh, well, use a shorter collar height and then the metal will be hidden. We're working subgingively instead of super gingival or at the gingiva, especially in the anterior on the maxilla. So if you can take out or not use in the first place a, uh, a 15 or a 30 degree abutment, uh, because you can use a, a zero degree with an angled screw channel with a 1.5 millimeter collar height, problem solved, right? And so that you can solve that problem on so many cases, especially a case that's been around for a while. You have tissue dieback, bone loss, that kind of thing. And now you have some exposure and you're thinking about making a labial flange of zirconia, which you don't want to do, right? So instead use something else to remove the metal as opposed to mask it. Um, if you, if you speak with a Nobel rep, uh, they are going to tell you that these are, uh, compatible with Nobel implants, Nobel MUAs, and that is true. And, uh, uh, but if you work through us, through Roe and obviously other laboratories too, you have the ability to, uh, to order a Procera bridge on these different systems, doing a little testing with Strawman. We do a lot of Strawman work. 
Uh, but but with Nobel, obviously, it's a it's a perfect marriage. Uh, but with these compatible MUAs, not implant level, but MUA level, uh, these companies have mimicked the conical shape of the of the MUA, and therefore we can order Procera bridges for all these other systems, which is a really nice advantage, right? Uh, let's get into how to order, how to how to attain a Procera bridge. So let's go into the first one, which is um, surgical, a little bit more of a, an analog technique after surgery. But uh, if you've seen this, this product uh, um, around the world, maybe you're involved in it, uh, it's, a, it's a brilliant way to, uh, to go to final after surgery uh, directly. This is uh, Dr. Jacob Kiefer. He's uh, uh, one of our um, serious chrome users up in the Northeast. And, um, Heck of a nice guy with a lot of experience. He's a heck of a photographer. So I, I put this slide up on here uh, because he's uh, you know just getting into these final restorations. We're talking about these Procera bridges. And well, anyway, if you're involved in Chrome or if you're not, this is a process. Uh, sorry for the um, you know the lunchtime gore here, uh, but uh, the the process is and this is just real quick in a nutshell. Uh, guided surgery where we are controlling the uh, the, the bone reduction, the implant placement, the temporary cylinder pickup, uh, and prosthetic delivery all in, you know, a few hours. But what happens is on the day of surgery, you do two pickups. The top one is the patient's uh, take-home prosthetic that they're going to wear. And the bottom is called the rapid appliance. It's a second pickup. And traditionally, that rapid appliance is held at the office. And in six months, the patient comes in and let me, let me, let me stay on this slide. The patient will come in and the long-term prosthetic is taken out. The rapid appliance is seated. It's equilibrated and you can do a reline impression, take a bite and an opposing, and you could go right to final. You could send that into us and we would order a Procera bridge for final. And it cannot get any simpler than that. Now, the top prosthetic the patient's been wearing for the past six months can also be relined, right? It, the equilibration, the tooth position, everything is already accepted, approved, or we can make adjustments to it here in the laboratory. But the point is that you can send the patient home in something they've been wearing, they approved, send the patient home that day in the rapid appliance, the bottom one, and the top one comes to us, physically comes to us in the mail, Reline impression, bite opposing, we scan it, we make some tweaks, some design changes if needed, add the molars, and we return a, uh, a Nobel Procera bridge. And that could not be simpler. So here's the first appointment. This is at the restorative part. First appointment, seat the rapids or reline the long the, the long-term prosthetic, bite registration, equilibration, bite registration, and send this to us. We do second, second appointment as a try-in. So Dr. Kiefer adds a little bit of pink to these uh, try-ins. So they're just beautiful. Patient even wore this for a couple of weeks, test drive, comes back in. Uh, we made the Procera bridges. Very simple process, right? And actually, forgive me, I believe the image on the right is actually still the temp. I, I should have put his final picture in there, uh, but Procera bridges. So very simple process to acquiring a final. There you start to finish. And the middle one's a smile simulation, which is also available through us. You know, patients have, been, have an old worn down uh, prosthetic. I'm gonna show a bunch of them here in a minute, but what are the possibilities of, uh, of turning over their, their long-term prosthetic into something more aesthetic, beautiful, something that really fits their face, do a smile simulation. We do them all with preview. It's a powerful software. I'd recommend anybody doing smile simulations to look, go to preview. And you basically rent their software and do this, do the smile simulations in your office in about five minutes. They're second to none, best in the world. So we've we've made thousands of smiles with them. There's nothing like it. The middle appointment where we did a printed try-in, generally they're monochromatic. Uh, we charge a little more. You can add pink to it. The patient can wear it at home. This is a printed lucitone material. Uh, but you try it in, and this is a test drive for the final, uh, either just clinically, real quick or test drive, but you would try it in, do a one screw uh, passivity test, x-ray to make sure it's seating, go through the normal protocols. Maybe you can visually see, 
Uh, and then if there's any gaps in the tissue, do a reline impression, equilibrate. And if there's aesthetic changes, uh, contouring, that kind of thing, do it then. Physically send it back to us and then we go to final. So that was the chrome surgical process, kind of a kind of a, a neat process that we have done um, just about 9,000 times in the past five years. That chrome product has become an international sensation. And one of the reasons is it's so easy to order a final, convert to final as opposed to traditional uh, denture conversion processes. So the last, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> the next one, the next, Forgive me, I shrink that. The next one is a rapid, rapid and existing prosthetic. So the rapid appliance is uh, kind of a different thing. It's, it's either from the surgical or we do, an, we do a rapid, kind of like a delayed method or a patient walks in with a prosthetic that needs to be uh, redone. Uh, you can see these images here. Look how far the midline is off. Patient has a gummy smile on the lower one. It's an FP1 on the upper. Uh, it works best if it's an MUA level, uh, implant level of work, but MUA level is what we generally work with. Patient comes in with really just about any situation uh, that you come across. And I took all these pictures, you know, full disclosure, most, almost all these from the internet, but just to give an idea of what, what comes in the office and what you can do with it. Uh, and, and why did we develop the rapid appliance technique? Uh, because the traditional methods are tedious. Uh, to say the least, uh, you have an appointment for a stock tray impression, comes back for a custom tray impression, second appointment. The third appointment is a fit verification jig and maybe a screw down bite block, probably with us, a screw down bite block, maybe not. Try in on the bottom left, right? So now we got, now we're at four appointments. On the fifth appointment, we're, if you're doing a traditional bar, with over to any, we don't, we don't do many of those anymore, but traditionally that's what it would have been. So fifth appointment, sixth appointment is probably a reset, which could be even with some of these more uh, digital processes. And then seventh appointment, a final seating. So three and a half to four months, depending on the patient schedule and what a hassle. I mean, I've seen spreadsheets on uh, the math of these, of the, of the cost of chair time, materials, doctor's time. It's incredible. It's barely profitable uh, at seven appointments. So instead, uh, do something else. We're, we're suggesting do something else that's quite simple. Uh, and this is one of the processes, but think about this. With almost all of our processes that we're gonna to show today, the patient is uh, provided a final restoration prototype on the second appointment, right? With, with all these protocols, uh, the implant model, bite, fit, aesthetics, tooth position, uh, all are confirmed on that second appointment. Uh, the team saves lots of time, appointments, expenses. Um, you can do other things on those on that, on that schedule. And then, of course, the patient gets to test drive the, the prosthetic. So, um, to, to make a rapid appliance, the, the materials are very simple. Uh, some type of flask. It can even be a denture cup. It doesn't have to be a, an official flask, something that will hold stone. Uh, you'll need some stone. Didn't that, did not add that here. You'll need multi-unit abutment analogs, uh, some lab putty, an opposing model of bite, and, uh, and then an impression of the tissue and the MUAs, and I'll explain it all. So I, I went through the whole process of recording what you do. So let's, let's just say patient comes in, it's a, a lower, I think I kind of added upper and lower images into this full rapid um, uh, slide deck here, uh, just for, like, for the most effective pictures. Patient comes in with a six unit lower prosthetic and needs a new one. It's fracture, the teeth are worn down, whatever the reason is. Of course, this one looks nice for our, for our demonstration here. Uh, but what you'll do is you'll order uh, either from us, from the lab or from your, from your rep, order the multi-unit abutment analogs, screw them into the prosthetic. Then once you have the prosthetic in hand with the, with the analogs, take your flask, fill it with stone, right? Till it's, till it's um, maybe three quarters full, set the multi-unit abutments in stone. And you can see, don't let the prosthetic touch stone. We're not trying to capture the intaglio of the prosthetic because it's probably a gap anyway. So you're not gonna, it won't, it won't tell us anything. So let it set. And then once it's set, 
what we want to do is take some lab putty. This is, uh, I believe this is Kettenbach material, uh, an accelerant and a putty, and just knead them together till they're one color, and then flask over the prosthetic. Put a little dimple in the middle that helps to make sure you capture the, uh, the intaglio, the lingual, sorry, uh, not the intaglio, capture the lingual. Once it's set, about 20 minutes, take the flask uh, off of the model, whichever one comes easier. Usually the flask comes out easier. You can leave it in the, you can leave it in the denture cup too and ship it to us. Take the flask off. Now we have a negative of the prosthetic, but look what we really have. We have implant position. We have tooth position. We have a means of mounting the case because you're gonna send a bite and an opposing. We have everything we need to make a prototype. The only thing we don't have is the tissue, right? So what you'll do is you'll just, while the prosthetic is out, you'll take a polyvinyl or an alginate impression of the tissue and the multi-unit abutments, just like that. No scan bodies, no analog, nothing. No impression posts, nothing, just that. Because we will digitally bring that into the case. And what we'll do with this is we will bring this into the software, Little, little hole there. This was actually from an intraoral scan. This is where I wanted to show really how, how it looks in software. So we will take the, uh, the, the, the prototype and we will articulate it, got the opposing, the digital, and then we will make a proposal for the final, which is the dark green here. We will email this to uh, the doctor and you'll approve it. Is that over jet okay? Is the overbite okay? And uh, you'll sign off on it. And from that point, we make the middle one, right? We make a, a printed try-in. It's monochromatic. Again, we can add pink. It's a lower. Patient can wear it home if, if, if you want them to. Otherwise, you're just going to do a clinical test and then simply physically send it back to us with the model work. And we'll order you a, uh, a Procera bridge just like that. And you're going to critique these and say, wait a minute, these cases aren't the same. They're not. And I, I kind of warned that at the beginning, you know, to get the work, to get the full workflow is always kind of tricky with pictures. But the idea is that you make a simple flask, a rapid appliance flask, we make you a prototype, and then we make you a final. And it's very efficient. It's only three appointments, very accurate. And you don't have to start at bite block. Another protocol, which is digital, right? So we went through surgical, went through analog, just simply analog, uh, analog procedure. And then we're gonna go through a digital procedure. And this is a fascinating product that we have uh, worked with for um, a number of years now. This is a patent pending uh, process. And the iJig is a prototype for the final, Right. In other words, we've made all of the aesthetic functional changes in software, but we made it from a digital impression. And I'll show you how that works. And this does require digital impressions. We really work with all the systems. Uh, if I'm missing any here, we probably work with it. The, the, the trick with all these um, systems is that you have the ability to scan the prosthetic in your fingers and roll over to the intaglio and capture these um, uh, these special iJig analogs. And actually they're a little, little bit different now than the ones in this picture. We use, uh, use a little different one, but these still work in case you yep. do have them already. So these are the tools, obviously an existing prosthetic, uh, a, a driver uh, for multi-unit abutment um, uh, screws and prosthetic screws and uh, iJig scan analogs, which you can buy from Row. I think they're only $25 a piece and they're reusable. You'd reuse them for every time you scan. Uh, and, uh, or, or you can use existing prosthetic screws. That's fine too. So what you'll, what you'll do, and I, I don't wanna go through the whole process. It takes a while to show the scanning of one of these prosthetics, but essentially you take the prosthetic out of the mouth and you scan the mouth. That's the first step to do. The bottom right is an image. You just scan the tissue, and you send it off to the lab. Okay, that's the first event, if you will, on the iOS scanner. Then open up a new event, unless you're working with CIRAC or maybe one other ones where you can actually stack multiple scans. But sometimes they'll get lost. You know, the scanners look for working, opposing, bite, send. And this is a little bit different. 
So send the bottom, bottom right off. Then you'll hold the iJig prosthetic in your fingers and you'll scan it 360 degrees so it looks like the top right. Every part of it is scanned. You'll screw the prosthetic back in the mouth and you'll scan the bite and the opposing. The next case I'm gonna show you is double arch. So it's a little bit different, but single arch, this is it. And we will fabricate this. Now, the, the neat thing about this is it's sectioned. Okay, so that, that's because we don't have an analog model to put those copings in. These are not coping free yet. Uh, but what you'll do with this is you'll just simply seat this in the mouth. You'll make sure that those sections are passive, that each section uh, is, um, has, has some passivity, passivity between them. You can put some dental floss through them. And then you'll do a, uh, an injection procedure to loot them all together. And then you'll do a reline impression with a little bit of tray adhesive to give us any um, gaps of tissue, equilibrate and return to us physically. So I'll just go through the process real quick. This will this will just take a second. So here's an eye jig, comes to the mouth, put some tray adhesive on the intaglio, seat it, screw it down. Right there's a little delivery device you can see in the top right. There's a tray that delivers it. Remove the tray, run some floss through each section, and then inject. Right, we use Stellar. You can use Voco. Or you can use Duralay. Uh, you know, a, a near zero shrinkage factor is very important. And then cure it. If it's a dual or light cure, fully equilibrate. Then capture a bite because it's equilibrated, uh, remove the eye jig, and then uh, um, just inspect the intaglio. Make sure it looks good, but there was a reline impression that, that everything is intact and then, uh, and then send it off to us. And from that, this is what we receive. This is what they look like. And, and you, you look at the screen, you go, what, you know, what, what a mess, right? That's uh, what, what are you gonna do with that mess? Well, what do we have here? We have teeth, just like before we have, tooth position, implant position, bite registration, opposing. We have a, a, a reline impression. So now we got an adequate, uh, perfect soft tissue model. What do we do with this? We make a, a printed try and we go to final or we go directly to final because the iJig was really a prototype. Totally up to you, uh, but very, very efficient method, right? So, and that's four appointments, digital impression, iJig seating, prototype, final, and the uh, the second the third appointment the prototype could be could be um, skipped. So let's let's go to the next one. This one's very quick. It's iJig. It's all the same protocols you saw for capturing uh, all the digital records with a twist. You can skip the iJig appointment. So it's still an iJig protocol because of the scan, but you don't have to have the iJig uh, seating appointment because on the top right. You did what we did in the rapid appliance. While the prosthetic is out of the mouth, you made an analog model. Just set it in stone and stick it in the mail. Because what we'll do is instead of making a sectioned prototype for final, we make one that's unsectioned and we loot the copings in on these models. And then you verify it, equilibrate it, physically send this printed trying back to us, we make a final. Very simple process, again, uh, and, and, and it really helps to, to, to make the analog models uh, because you can skip that, that other appointment. The fifth and last method, which is uh, bleeding edge, as they say, technology. Uh, I, I only say that because uh, what we're doing with it, I believe is bleeding edge, uh, the, the pick, and the ICAM have been around for a number of years. Uh, we saw them in at, at um, IDS in Germany five years ago. They were around a little bit before that. Uh, their technology is incredible uh, for making a for making a passive digital file. And the reason we held off on getting involved is because we found that their acquisition of multi-unit abutment or implant position is more accurate than the model we would print to reproduce it. And we didn't trust a resin printed model to go to, you know, to make a restoration. So instead we decided to stay fully digital, which is where Nobel 
uh, Prosera Bridge came in when they when they walked in our door months ago and put that uh, coping free Prosera Bridge in our hands. Uh, the light bulb went off. You know, now we get involved with ICAM and maybe pick some time, but right now ICAM and and make a prosthetic. Uh, simply from digital records, uh, in my opinion, unattainable before, uh, 100% digital. So watch this cool process. This is this is Dr. Hansen. He's he he and I have worked together uh, uh, an awful lot in the past five months, completing uh, several cases, all from his digital records. Uh, Dr. Hansen is. Uh, <laughs> Great to talk to and great to troubleshoot problems with, uh, but very good at what he does clinically with the records. Exceptional. And it made our job easier for, for really for r and um, this process. So what he had, this, this is a, this, I'm going to show two cases. So this case is he had a patient come in today with a completely demolished upper temporary hybrid. So patient already had, even though this doctor does surgery, he had a patient who already had a hybrid, needed a new one. So he uploaded the scans. He took the ICAM scans. You saw that with the dominoes. He takes desk scan bodies. Uh, that's a company, desk. They sell scan bodies that are specifically made for the ICAM registration. He scanned the prosthetic. He scanned the opposing and scanned the bite. He sent that to us. Here are the records. I'll turn this down. It just makes that little beeping noise. That's his registering. But the dominoes are in the mouth, and the doctor takes his uh, ICAM scan. He hovers it over the mouth. And he is capturing uh, the positions of the four, in this case, four multi-unit abutment positions, i.e. implant positions. And it takes, uh, I think it's a minute or two, you know, depending on how many implants there are. They're, these are really spread out through the mouth, so it's easy for the, cat, for the camera to capture them. But it registers, one, you can see green, green, red, red. So he'll keep going until they're all green. And then once that's finished, he'll take those scan flags out the dominoes. He'll do another scan with these desk analogs and then he'll seat the prosthetics and he'll do intraoral scans of the prosthetic seated. Those are the scans. And then what, what we receive, you see on the left is we have tissue, we have scan bodies, we have a prosthetic seated that can be registered back to the original scan and we have tissue so we have intaglio. So this is what it looks like in color. This is black and white. And what do we do with this? We bring this into our software. We have what the patient's wearing. We have implant positions. I think I'll turn on the little, yep. yep. So we have, um, uh, those are not copings. Those are screw channels. Those are just screw channels. This is a coping free try-in and a coping free uh, Nobel Procera bridge. Make a proposal. Right here, that's what we're proposing as a new final. We print it in, uh, we print it, we send that off to the doctor as a preview. And sometimes it's just screenshots with the DTX software, uh, Nobel software. And sometimes it's a, <clears throat> a video plan for a prototype. Doctor signs off on it. We fabricate this. This is a printed try-in for trial. And we use these special screws and these screws contact the resin only, no copings. So now we're really test driving the, the coping free prosthetic. Doctor will receive this. And then you can, you can see here, print a trying with pink went perfectly, no adjustment, order the Procera bridge. So, so he, he screwed this in. Now this is, we put pink on this because we wanted the patient to wear this one home, be comfortable with it. Screwed it in, he had no adjustment, zero. And he did not have to send the prosthetic back. There's no model. There's nothing to articulate or ship, nothing. He just calls us and says, make a final. So with that, we, uh, we just simply uploaded our file to Nobel. They milled this bridge. We shipped it back to him, screwed it down. Away the patient went. It was brilliant. And you can see his quote here, final zirconia uh, seated with no adjustment. I, I can't think of a, a better, more efficient way to do it. Now you have to buy a scanner. You have to buy an iCam scan. Uh, we're working with we're working on PIC. Maybe someday we'll be compatible with the PIC scanner. Right now it's iCam. It's pretty affordable, I think, for what you get, especially if you have a lot of full large cases in your practice that need uh, turned over in the coming years. Let's look at one more. This is uh, a dual arch. This one's a little. This one's pretty creative. Uh, uh, but may, maybe don't don't focus on the complexity of the 
the workup to get to um, to get to scanning. Uh, but maybe, maybe is, you know, in other words, that that's going to be kind of intimidating because what what he did with this case was he sent us these are just photographs on the left. He sent us a digital impression of the patient. So this was pre-surgical. And from this, we did a diagnostic, a digital diagnostic workup, made a matrix. And from this, he went to surgery and uh, it was a freehand surgery and uh, um, sent the patient home for just a few days over a weekend in this prosthetic. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the bite is, is uh, the bite was, was right on for him. He had to do a little bit of equilibration, but it's based on the prelim, uh, you know, the preoperative um, uh, records. So he converted this and on the day of surgery, he scanned it. So 96 hours later, we sent him a prosthetic. These are the files that he sends us on the day of surgery. Though that same protocol, we went through just kind of like what I've been showing all, all, all along here. We make him a prototype. We, we emailed this over within 24 hours. Uh, there is the tissue. And, and you know, this is, this is a temporary. We're gonna go to a final uh, down the road. There's gonna be changes in the tissue. Yes. Uh, but we have the records here to make a Procera bridge. In the end, all the doctor has to do is scan the tissue, upload it to us. We bring it into uh, the plan and we order a bridge. Coping free, model free, 100% digital. You cannot do that with any other zirconia. Not possible that I know of. You can chat in the end if you like, and we can talk about it, or you can give me a call if there's some other option. We've been looking into this for a long time, and uh, Procera Bridge seems to be the only method of doing this uh, that I've seen, you know, model-free, coping-free, 100% digital. Here's a try-in patient, you know, patient went home in the other prosthetic, the not-so-hot prosthetic, but, you know, had this by, uh, I believe, Tuesday after a Thursday surgery. Very efficient. Nice work. And so just a little recap, there is surgical, there is digital, there is analog. However, your office is set up uh, to take records for full arch. I, I think this presentation kind of answered any of those, uh, those methods uh, with simple to use uh, techniques. And I, I, I thank everyone for joining us. We're gonna have a little chat here at the end. Um, I do wanna mention, um, we have two courses coming up. One is on uh, the 18th, uh, surgical guides from simple guides to full arch. Uh, I'll, I'll give that presentation. I, I enjoy that one. We make a lot of surgical guides here. So hope you join us for that. And then we are quote unquote, changing the whole industry. Uh, this will be a, a full arch guided surgery program with Dr. Uh, Grant Olson. Uh, that's not Gant, it's Grant. Sorry about that, Dr. Olson. Uh, where he is going to demonstrate uh, full arch immediate load chrome surgery using zero holes. You can see that prosthetic, there's no holes in it. The patient went home with that on the day of surgery using energy, not screws, no screws. Fascinating technology.